أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين وبعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على النبي الأمي العربي الهاشمي الغرشي العبد المؤيد بالرسول المسدد الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرضين بأب القاسم مصطفى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على آله آل الله واللعن الدائم على عدائهم عداء الله إلى قيام يوم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Respected brothers and sisters May Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept all your deeds during the holy month of Ramadan and inshallah until this day inshallah I hope that you could achieve uh, higher levels of spirituality and purification of your hearts inshallah rahman again we're here to talk about short lessons from tafsir al-mizan and tonight i'm going to talk about one of the most fundamental issues and and pillars of islam according to quran and according to interpretation of Allah Mutabatawa in Tafsir al Mizan. All of you have read Surah Al Baqarah. Tonight I'm going to focus on one of the verses of this uh, blessed chapter of Holy Quran. And inshallah, I will talk about the uh, ideas of Allah Mutabatawa around this verse. Audhu billahi min shaitan al rajim, verse number 213 of Surah Al Baqarah. Audhu billahi min shaitan al rajim, kana nas ummata waqidah. فبعث الله النبيين مبشرين ومنذرين وأنزل معهم الكتاب كتاب بالحق ليحكم بين الناس في مختلف فيه. In this verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, mankind was once one nation. So God dispatched prophets as heralds and warners. He sent the book down along with them to bring the truth. So as to decide among mankind concerning whatever they had been disagreeing about. This verse of Surah Al-Baqarah is so important to Allah Taala. On many occasions, in many of his, his, his works, he mentions this verse of Quran. Why? Because he believes that this verse indicates uh, the social aspect and foundation of the holy religion of Islam. You know, many people argue that if the religions or all the spiritual uh, schools in the in the universe should be, you know, individual. Some people say that they should be individual. The all the schools about the spirituality and all the religions, they just really need to concern on the individual aspect of the human being. Because the social aspect especially after the modernity, is up to who? To human beings, logic and aql, intellect. No more. So the religion, is, uh, the religion of Islam should focus on the individual aspect of the human being. But if we go to Quran, and if we go to the origins of this religion, we see that the, 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 the things is different, are different. Why? Allah Ta'ala says that in this verse of Quran, and then he talks about the verse number 200 of Surah Ali Imran, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, when he wants to talk about the philosophy of the prophethood and the secret behind uh, sending down the books and electing and appointing the prophets, he talks about the social aspect of the human being. Look in this verse, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that people once were one nation. They didn't have any disagreement. Inshallah, we'll talk about this. But after the emerging of those disagreements, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the prophets. So, prophethood was something about the society. How? Allah wa ta'ala here, you know, here in, in the second volume of Tafsir al-Mizan, he talks for more than 30 pages to make all the readers of the tafsir understand the logic behind this kind of interpretation of this verse of Quran. He says that, you know, human being, when he came on, on, on the earth, because human being has this material process of leaving, and because he, when he wants to leave, he needs to 
be, be fed, he, he needs to have a shelter, he needs to drink, and so on and so forth. So human being starts to use other beings, other objects, animals, uh, you know, the rocks, iron, anything you see in this world, trees, plants, the ground, to what? For his benefit, to live longer. As Allah says, Human being exploits other beings to live longer. This is in his nature because he wants to live more. He wants to live. If you want to live, you need food, you need shelter, you need water. Okay. So it's why he says that uh, human being starts to use, you know, the objects like, like the like the trees and the the wood to make weapons and then kill animals and eat those animals. So always human being looked around and started to use the objects and the resources on this planet to live longer. But Allah Ta'ala says that human being does not stop here, but goes further and wants to use even other human beings, exploit other human beings use other human beings for his benefits so if he can he uses others to go hunt for him to make food for him yes to prepare a shelter for him a house for him so this human being does not stop in any point he uses other things but he says at some level this human being alongside other human beings the fellow, hum fellow human beings, they come to this conclusion that if they get together and make a community, by that community and by distributing the labors and duties, they can have a better and more prosperous and a, a, a life with a better quality and live longer. So they come to this conclusion to start establishing a society. Allah says this is how society take place, takes place in the history of mankind. So by this society, you will distribute all the duties. Okay, you, you pe people, they choose to go on farm. Some people go to industry. Some people go bake bread. Some people go... And, 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 and take care about the law and about the constitution. Others go other places like you, you see in your society. Different people with different duties and different jobs. So they help each other. They make this contribution with each other to all of them be benefited from the resources of this planet. But he says, this is the first part of this verse. Kanan nas ummata wahida. They realize that they need a society. So they get together as one nation. But that instinct of exploitation and using others is still alive. So any person who can gain more power in this society and becomes a uh, superior in this society he will again start to use even other people for his benefits. He uses, does again that istikhdam, uses other people for his benefits. And it makes and causes disagreements and fights between people. Because whoever gets to do anything against others, to have more from these resources, he will do that. Especially if he, gain more, he gains more power. Allah Ta'ala says, this is where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent down the Sharia. The whole body of the laws and regulations of the religion. Yes, religion was alive since human being came to this universe because Adam was a prophet. But as Sharia, it started after the disagreements emerged in the society. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wants to talk about the an and when he wants to talk about the penal codes, the regulations, the laws, the constitutions, the book, 
he talks about the society. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the situation. كَانَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً فَبَعَفَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ Here is فَاخْتَلَفُ Didn't mention in this verse, but we can understand that by the meaning of this verse. People started to fight each other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the book and appointed the prophets. Okay. Allah Tabatabai, according to this verse of Quran, says that the philosophy of the prophethood is social. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not just look at the individual aspects of the human being. He rather firstly looks at the social aspect of the human being. And then he says that the religion which contains the most teachings about the society is Islam. If you look at the teachings of Islam, look at the laws of Islam, ethical uh, rulings of Islam, ethical teachings of Islam, even the uh, aqa'at and the theology of Islam, you see that the social aspect is so much emphasized. So here he says that, he says that, for the human being, because what was the purpose of the creation? We talked about the purpose of the creation was for the human being to reach the highest levels of spirituality, which was the state and the position of Al Khilafah, the wise gerency of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in those lectures, we said what? We said that position is a spiritual position. This is why angels claimed that position. They wanted to be in that position. And they said, We are the most spiritual beings in this universe of Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them what? I know someone higher, more than you, greater than you. So if this is the purpose of the creation, so the purpose of the religion must be in line with the purpose of the creation. This is obvious. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending down the book and is appointing the prophets for the purpose of the creation. Okay. So what happens? Allah ta'ala says that if you look at these two uh, propositions here, you will get to this result that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees this society as the means for reaching that purpose of the creation. This is why in Tafsir al-Mizan, when he uh, interprets the uh, Surah Ali Imran, another verse, beautiful verse in Quran, Lama Tawata, but he uses that, that verse uh, to talk about the social aspect of Islam, so, uh, verse number 200 of Surah Ali Imran, Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Ya Ayyuhal Ladhin Aman, O the believers, Isbiru, be patient, Wasabiru, and help others to be patient. Have the social patience, Warabitu, and be connected with other people in your society. Wattaqullaha Allahakum Tuflahun. He there says what? He there says, if you look at the teachings of Islam, you see a pyramid. You see that all the teachings of Islam are helping this human being to reach the highest levels of spirituality. He says the most fundamental teaching here is what? Is the social teachings of Islam, social penal code of Islam, social constitutions of Islam. He says that Islam at first wants this society to be healthy, to be just, to be free. So in that society, you will expect free, just, and spiritual individuals. So he says that Islam, at first, Islam wanted to reform the society. And this is what Rasulullah did to the Mecca and Medina. So see what he says there in the fourth volume of Tafsir al-Mizan. He says, in short, a, mediate, a, a meditator on the Quran will at once realize that it is a book which deals with all the affairs related to the humanity. It expounds the knowledge of Genesis and resurrection, creation and existence. It explains the general human virtues. First was aqa'it, the resurrection, Genesis, everything. Second was akhlaq, the general human virtues. 
and lays down the social and personal laws which encompass, encompass the whole human species and guide them in all big and small affairs. The social aspect. The social regulations and laws. Then there are stories, lessons and sermons. And there he says, analyze its laws and rules and you will find them firmly based on the based on pristine monotheism and that monotheism when looked divinely gifted wisdom appears in the details of sharia so this is the quran he says that if you look at quran you see that all those social social regulations of quran goes back to tawhid and if you use and start tawhid you will reach to those social aspects of the Islamic law. So the Islamic law for the society is something to help people improve their society and reach those highest, highest levels of spirituality. And then Allah under verse number 213 of Surah Al-Baqarah in the second volume of Tafsir Al-Mizan, he says that no other school of thought can present such a law and regulation. This is important. He says that no one can stop human being from exploitation, from using others. Because, okay, if you want to go to Marxism or liberalism or capitalism, okay, they always try, especially capitalism, they always try to stop people from interfering to other people's affairs and become unjust and make atrocities in the society by what by laws and regulations okay this law stops you from not paying taxes from assaulting other people from violating other people's rights okay but out of this law you've got nothing to stop people because if you have a materialistic world view people are free to do anything because this is the first and the last time they get this chance to leave so they have to be free to do anything because if you deprive them from a moment you're depriving them from a moment for eternity because they're not gonna get that moment again but he says according to islam because everything starts with the tawheed and the spiritual teachings of islam when Islam is talking about the laws and regulations, these laws and regulations all go back to Tawheed. This is why when Islam provides laws and regulations, Islam is providing them to people who are believing in Tawheed. And before telling them, you know, don't steal people's money, don't assault people's rights, don't do anything bad in the society, before that teaches him and her to be a believer in Tawheed and in the hereafter. Because if you don't believe in hereafter, why should you observe other people's rights? If there is nothing, there is no chain of law which stops you. When there is no stop, why should you stop? Because there is no hereafter. There is no life after this. This is the life that you've got and you have to maximize your pleasure in this life. But according to Islam, this is not the last life. This is just the beginning. The eternal life is somewhere else. So he says that Islam establishes its laws and regulations on Tawheed. And because Tawheed is giving its believers a higher and further perspective and conception and gives them another kind of conception about the other world, this penal code, this regulation, which comes from Tawheed, which is derived from Tawheed, can stop people from violating other people's rights. This is why Allah Tabatabai says that we believe that Islamic laws are still alive. Because the fitra of the human being is still alive. You cannot substitute the Islamic law with the capitalism or Marxism. 
because the basis of those ideas are not based on Tawheed, are not based on the realities of this world. And this is why we talked about all those subjects in the previous lectures. When we understand the reality of the human being and the infinite uh, destination for this human being, and this human being cannot be confined to this worldly life if you understand all those things. So what happens? You will not stop at any level. You will not be convinced with this worldly life. Yes, Islam does not let you to ruin and destroy this worldly life. Because Islam tells you that you have to maximize the benefit of this life because this was Allah's gift to you. So you can maximize the benefits of the hereafter. This is why we believe that Islam gives us laws and regulations to build this life, a just, free, prosperous society. I know when we look at the uh, recent centuries of Islamic history, it's really dark. But why is it dark? Because we started to, uh, you know, be, be, be more unfamiliar with the teachings of Islam. We started to put Quran aside. And we got stuck in this contradiction between modernity and the tradition and Islam. And we could not reconcile that because we were not going back to Quran again and again and again so we can understand the questions to the modern day answers, to, the, to, to get the answers to the modern day questions. So, by this understanding, we want to say that Islam is a social religion. Whoever confines Islam to the individual levels that person did not recognize Islam very well. Or is a traitor to Islam. I'm not going to talk about that. Because Islam is loudly and clearly says that I was brought to you for what? So you can remove all of these arguments from your society. And then I will help you to elevate yourself. To purify yourself. Some people just want Islam as, a, as an amusement. A means for meditation, yeah, for peace and solace in your quiet place. This is not Islam. You may find some Eastern schools of thought and Eastern spiritualities which can uh, provide you with that, which I'm, I'm not going to get into that, which one of them is true or false. But Islam is telling you that I'm going to provide peace and solace and spirituality through this society. You have to build your community. You have to build your society. You cannot be absent when the duties of building an Islamic society come. And this is the final promise of Allah to us. And I will put you as the as my khulafa on the earth. Okay? So Allah Mutabatabai there in Surah Al Baqarah and again in Surah to Ali Imran he says that Islam is a social religion and the whole purpose behind the prophethood was the society. And then purifying people, individuals. Irfan of Islam, yes, it crosses and passes the path of the society. This is why Allah Mutabatawai always said on many occasions in different books that Islam puts all the spiritual gifts in the different corners of the society. You have to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are in the society. Not just when you're living in your cave. When you're dealing with people. When you're buying and selling. When you're teaching and studying. That is the hard job. To be in the middle of the society. In the heart of the society. To do your duty. 
to fight for Islam. But in the same time, be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of us, brothers and sisters, can take our martyrs, not just the martyrs of the early ages of Islam, today's martyrs, the martyrs of our age, as the examples for ourselves. Because they were in the middle, in the heart of the battle, in the heart of the society. But they were fully mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the beauty of Islam. In the middle of society, but with the spirituality. A spirituality with the social contribution. Islam never tells Muslimin, never tells them to go back and stay and sit in your cave. No. You have to be in the middle of society. And in the same time, you have to be spiritual and mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how that happens inshallah in the next lecture i will talk about al-imamah and how it affects the social mindfulness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thank you for listening to me and being with me may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us all among the most sincere followers of amir al-mu'mineen alayhi salam assalamu alaykum ورحمة الله وبركاته وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الأطهار